What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through exactly what makes a good bottom fishing reel. I'll be going through a lot of key features that make up a reel and tell you exactly why they are or aren't important for a bottom fishing application. So before you go out and purchase your next bottom fishing reel, be sure to check out this entire video so you can make sure you get exactly what you need to get out on the water and be successful. And we're diving in right now. All right, so when it comes to bottom fishing, there's basically two different types of reels that we're gonna be talking about. One is the conventional style reel, and the other one is the spinning style reel. For a dedicated bottom fishing setup, I think that a conventional reel really is the way to go. Conventional reels typically have a lot higher line capacity, so you can pack on a little bit more of that high strength line uh, that you generally use when you're bottom fishing uh, for species like grouper and snapper. So the other thing is the conventional reels tend to have a little bit higher drag rating uh, when compared to the spinning reels. The negative things that I see with a spinning setup for a bottom fishing uh, reel is number one because it's on the bottom side of the rod um, a lot of times if maybe you get a really big fish and it's pulling hard down on your rod uh, and you have to use the boat for a little bit of leverage uh, what's going to happen is you're going to either jam the reel um, into the boat itself or you're going to jam the line between the gunnel and the rod itself which which is really bad on uh, kind of fighting that fish and the other thing if you're ever going in really really deep water any sort of like deep drop fishing or anything over, I don't know, a couple hundred foot of water, uh, the spinning setup or the spinning reels generally have a little bit less line capacity. So you're going to be using a lot of that um, spool volume, the line volume off of your spool um, to get to the bottom. So you're not going to have a whole lot of room in order to fight any fish if you ever catch anything big. So those are some of the kind of downsides of a spinning setup when it comes to the type of reel that you're going to be uh, using for bottom fishing. The next thing we need to do is figure out how much line capacity we need our reel to hold. So the best advice I can give you for how to pick out uh, the size of reel when it comes to line capacity or how much line capacity your reel uh, should have is number one, you need to understand uh, the pound test line that you're typically going to be using and how much line you need in order to get to the bottom plus have a little bit of room for drift that you're going to have to account for when you're bottom fishing plus have a little bit extra for uh, fighting whatever fish that you're going to be pulling up. So if you're not too familiar with the depths or you're just getting into fishing or just pick, just got a new boat and you want to go out and try some bottom fishing, what I highly recommend is go pick yourself up some, some top spot maps, maybe download the Navionics uh, boat app or it gives you a lot of depths in your area that you're going to be fishing. And then go and look around uh, the general area that you're going to be fishing uh, on your map and check out depths of all the different areas and the reefs uh, that you're going to be fishing typically. So I've got a 2120 Riballo, an older 91 Riballo that I take out no more than probably 25 or 30 miles off. And I usually go up towards Port Canaveral, Florida. I'll go towards Sebastian, Fort Pierce, or and sometimes we take it down to the Keys. Um, and fish and fish down there in the Isla Mirada area. Uh, but what I like to do is pick up my map uh, and go and look around the areas that I'm generally going to be fishing and the, at that distance from shore that I'm typically going to be traveling. And I find out uh, a general, uh, what's the max depth that I'm going to be fishing for. So, so when looking around uh, my area in the east coast of Florida, uh, about 20 miles out, the deepest that I'm going to go, the max depth that I'm usually going to hit when I'm bottom fishing is going to be about 110 fathoms. Uh, you got you to gotta be careful when you're looking at top spots because the units are in fathoms, not in feet or in yards. So that's about uh, 220 yards or 660 feet. Um, and that's going to be the maximum. Actually, more likely, I'm actually typically at about 60 to maybe 120 foot of depth in most of the areas that I'm going to be fishing. So almost all the reels that I have on my boat are going to be plenty enough to get down to that 100, uh, 120 foot range without any really problem at all. But since I do like to go out a little bit deeper every once in a while, um, I'll go ahead and get reels. Most of them are packed with about 300 to 400 yards of, of line capacity that I have for the line that I'm going to use. And that's typically around a 50 to 60 pound uh, line. One word of advice is sometimes or usually the reels as they're advertised line capacity is a little bit inflated. So if you're on that kind of edge between a um, you know size A and size B reel, uh, make sure you you might maybe look at that. If you're really, really close on that edge, you might want to step it up to the, the next size up. That way you make sure you get all the line that you that you need because a lot of times I've noticed that it's like 
10, 5, 10% less line actually goes on the reel than what's advertised by most of the manufacturers. Next thing we're gonna talk about is number one, the, the style of drag that you have, and number two, the max drag rating that you should be looking for with your next bottom fishing reel. So no matter what the style of drag that you have, um, the general rule of thumb that I've that I like to keep in mind is that I like the max drag for my reel to be at least 25 to 30% of the break strength uh, of the line that I'm gonna be using. But like I said earlier, I typically stay around the 65 pound range uh, for most of my bottom fishing applications. Sometimes I'll step it up to 80, but generally it's in that 65 pound range. So what that means is I need the real max drag rating to be at least 16 pounds, max 16 pounds to so about 24 pounds, which is generally no problem for most of the saltwater, uh, the saltwater reels that you have out on the market today. So I will, I will throw out a word of caution. As you use your reel over time, you get the, the drag kind of gets wore in. Um, it kind of starts to deteriorate over time. So be sure to have a little bit of margin in your in your max drag rating because over time that max drag rating will go down a little bit as you break that reel in. But like I said, most reels you're gonna find are gonna be plenty for most of the bottom fishing that you're gonna do, at least in my area. On the topic of drag, we wanna talk a little bit about the style or type of drag system uh, that's preferred for bottom fishing. Uh, there's basically two different styles or types of drag systems, one being a star drag system and the other being the lever drag system. Now, it really comes down to personal preference um, for the type of drag that you use. Um, you won't go wrong with either one. And uh, what I prefer, just because of the ease for uh, setting a drag to a particular level uh, very consistently, is the lever drag system. And if I ever want to crank down a little bit more, it's very easy to use the lever drag system on there uh, in order to crank down just a little bit more. So the next things we're going to talk about a little bit is going to be your gear ratio and your line retrieval rate. These two ratings in a reel usually come kind of hand in hand, meaning the slower gear ratio typically leans towards the slower retrieve rate, but really there's a few more things to consider when it comes to retrieve rate, such as the size of your handle, the length of your handle, and the size of your spool. So there's a lot of things that can kind of uh, kind of vary your line retrieve rate versus your uh, your gear ratio. But when it comes to gear ratio, what the most important thing when it comes to bottom fishing is gonna be having a reel that's very powerful, which usually correlates to a low gear ratio reel. And the reason you want a low gear ratio reel with a lot of power is because you wanna be able to crank hard down whenever you get a strike on the bottom, especially if you're fishing around reefs, that way you can pull those fish quickly without any give off the bottom and get them away from the wreck. The reason that is, is because a lot of times those fish like to dive straight back down into the reef kind of to protect themselves. And when it comes to snapper, they can swell up and wedge themselves in, in the wreck, in some holes in the wreck, or they can swim under rock and they'll break you off in a heartbeat uh, if you let them get down into the wreck. So what you wanna do is have a reel that's got a lot of power, which usually correlates to a lower gear ratio, so you can immediately crank down on that fish and then get them off the bottom where you can just kind of slowly crank them in all the way back up. So the, so the negative of a low gear ratio reel and particularly a, a low line retrieval rate is that it's just gonna take you more rotations or, or more cranks in order to get that line back off the bottom, back up to your boat uh, to move to the next spot or check your bait and all that sort of stuff. So um, you're gonna have a little bit of trade off there. Luckily, like the Shimano Talica, um, and the many other reels that you look at have a two speed system. So they have a low gear ratio and a high gear ratio with like a click of a button. Um, and, and, and those are actually really great reels that kind of have the best of both worlds. Uh, that way you can drop it down, put it in low gear, wait for that bite, you get something, you got the pulling power that you need in order to pull them off, off, off the bottom. And then as they get either higher up or maybe you just wanna uh, check your bait, you click it into high gear and you can pull it on up but on a much uh, higher retrieve rate. So those are some things to just consider. But if you're going with a single speed reel, uh, which most people are gonna be going for, and there's an option for a lower or a high gear ratio, if it's a dedicated bottom fishing setup, I really, really recommend uh, you sticking with that lower gear ratio to give you that extra ump for that extra power or pulling those fish off the bottom. So the last thing we wanna look at uh, for bottom fishing, uh, bottom fishing reel, um, a common question I hear is, do you want a reel that has a level wind system? Um, so in my opinion, um, having a level wind system on any saltwater reel 
um, is going to be problematic, especially if, if uh, you're somebody who maybe doesn't you know, religiously clean their reels after every fishing trip. But in general, that level wine system, um, I find that it becomes more of a hassle than it's worth. And a lot of times ends up being the first thing that breaks on your reel and it requires a lot more maintenance. So um, I don't recommend a level wine system. I mean, for amateur anglers or somebody who's not used to um, thumbing the line back and forth whenever they're reeling it in, it can kind of take some getting used to. Um, sometimes some people might need some help to make sure that they're uh, winding the line back in and guiding it in a kind of level fashion on the reel, um, which, which is kind of cumbersome at time and, and, and can get maybe forgotten about, especially in the heat of, uh, of the battle with a, with a fish. But in the long run, going with a reel and just learning how to use it without a level wine system is going to be your best bet. I highly recommend that. As a matter of fact, I've been to a lot of uh, fishing tackle stores, especially your smaller chain uh, fishing tackle stores, and, and they won't even sell bigger saltwater bottom fishing reels uh, with a level wine system. All right, guys, well, that about wraps it up. Uh, I hope this video was able to kind of give you a better understanding of what makes up a good bottom fishing reel, and it'll help you go out and pick the next reel uh, for your bottom fishing applications. If you did like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button. If you really liked it, it'd be awesome if you subscribe to to make sure you're always following along the new videos that we release. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.